Hi, Karthik here from Design School by WP Algorithm. In this video, we will take a look at Elementor's nav menu widget. It's a part of Elementor Pro and it has ton of features to build cool customizable headers. In addition to that, we will also see how we can tweak it using a little bit of CSS and even better, we will also build our own nav menu widgets using unlimited elements. So we will build nav menus such as this one. It's quite easy, you don't have to write any code, all you need to do is to copy and paste and we'll also build menus like this one or menus such as this one all by using Elementor and a free add-on called Unlimited Elements. First we'll see the nav menu widget in action then we'll build our own nav menu widgets. Without wasting any further time, let's get into today's video. First, let's start with the normal use case of a nav menu widget, which is to build it into your header, right? So let's add three column layout and then we'll add nav menu at the middle. We'll add logo and a search bar and then I'll show you how nav menu functions on various breakpoints. So first drag in the nav menu widget. This will be my logo and this will be my search bar. Let's tweak the logo now. Let's give this column a width of 10%. Let this have a width of 70% and this one a width of 20%. Doesn't matter. Let's also add a background to our section. I think that would do. I'll update it. Once you drag in the nav menu widget, the menu should be created at the back end. So you can click on appearance, click on menus and create a new menu already have a menu setup so it has various links just add any other link that you want you can simply select the page you want or a custom link and click on add to menu and save this menu the same menu will also be reflected in elementary nav menu widget you can pick all the different menus that you create in the back end from here using the drop down layout you can pick between horizontal vertical and drop down so that becomes a toggle and every time user wants to access it he needs to click the toggle but usually we'll pick vertical. You can align the menu so you can put it, you can stretch it within its column, center it or align it onto the right or even align it onto the left which is the default one. Pointer, you can select any pointer that you want, overline, underline. So when he hovers over the menu or you can pick a background. So something like that. You can also pick text. So the text becomes bigger or it will shrink, sync and all the different animations. So based on what you pick here, all the contextual options show up. I'll just settle with none. You can also change the submenu indicator. Again within menu, if you drag an item right to right below it, it becomes its submenu. And the indicator for that is this. You can change that from here. You can pick any submenu indicator that you want. And this one is really important. What exactly is the mobile drop down? Well, I'll show you what it is. So let's say if you want to break this menu at tablet, which means when the width of the screen reaches 1025 pixels, this menu will turn into a hamburger icon. If you break it at this width, at this particular width, when this either the screen is scaled or on mobile devices the menu becomes a hamburger icon otherwise the menu stays intact so that's what it means let's pick tablet i'll click on this eye icon click on preview so you don't know how your menu or the header would look like at this particular width that we selected for our menu so you always need to click on the eye icon and click on preview and watch what happens to our header when i scale this horizontally at one particular point it turns into a hamburger icon well this is responsive i'm not saying it's not it is responsive but it's ugly right but we can change this so even on tablet you can choose to show this menu so we'll change the breakpoint from tablet to mobile which is this we'll see how that would look right now so even at 846 pixels the menu looks good and we shrink it further now the menu turns into a hamburger don't worry we can adjust this quite easily. I'll show you how. So we have fixed the tablet layout because we chose this breakpoint at 846 and based on the font size, margin, padding and a lot more settings, your menu might get a little padding. So your menu would become bigger and all the elements would be pushed further. So you need to pick 
a value at which you can comfortably change this nav menu into a hamburger so such as 846 pixels for me 846 pixels is working fine so if you add any margin padding font size and all that stuff you might also consider changing the breakpoint itself in elementor settings so if your menu is or if your header is breaking at some point and getting ugly you can change these values in the elementor settings so that that match the values at which your headers or basically any other elements are breaking so it for pixels is fine with me well how do you solve the tablet or the mobile problem on mobile the columns are different but don't worry we can fix that i want the logo on to the left i want the nav menu toggle which is the hamburger icon and also the search toggle side by side on to the right side not on to the extreme right but somewhere in the middle i want the menu or the logo on to the extreme left we can quite comfortably do that so you click on this click on mobile now you can see all the values that you can change for mobile devices so whichever has these icons those can be adjusted per device so i'll just change this to 80 percent i'll change this to 10 percent i'll change this to 10 percent as well or let's change this to 70 percent this one to maybe 15 percent and the rest is 15 percent don't worry about that you can also change the alignment from top to middle or bottom i think bottom is looking good for mobile you can also adjust the alignment of this search menu i'll click on this logo i'll align it onto the left again this has the devices icon which means the values can be changed per device so our header would look something like this but i want this toggle don't worry we'll adjust this not a big deal but we want this toggle onto the right and the search bar onto the left can we do that it can quite easily be done using css so you click on section let's call the column that has the nav menu call one so i'll just click on this column i'll go to classes and here i'll say call hyphen one i'll call this call hyphen two or you can call this one call one call hyphen two call hyphen three the way you want now in elementor when you click on the section and when you go to responsive there's a way to reverse all the columns but i want to specifically reverse these two columns but not the logo i think the logo should be on to the left and that's not possible using the settings that they gave here you can do it in another way so you can create another nav menu column that's not shown on that's basically hidden on desktop and tablet and you can show that on mobile so that way you can position that particular toggle onto the right of this one but that will add another additional element and you don't want that there's an easier way to do this so click on this in the class for it is call one and the breakpoint for it or the width at which this is being shown is 846 pixels or the tablet breakpoint so you just go to this section go to custom css first add the breakpoint condition i've already explained breakpoints so you say at the rate media only screen so on regular devices and then you specify the condition max width and this max width should be the mobile breakpoint which is 846 pixels which is also the width at which this turns into a toggle so the moment it turns into a toggle we'll position it onto the right how do you do that well you first target the column that has this particular nav menu and elementor works based on a css framework called flexbox it's quite simple it's similar to css grid it was there before grid it's universally supported so elementor works based on the flexbox framework and it's supported by all major browsers and in order to change this similar to z index there is something called a property called order so order will set the way in which the element should be rendered so if you give this column a higher order than this one this will be shown after this one that's what we're going to do so since i called this call one i'll just say order i'll say three and just like that with a single line of css code the toggle is pushed onto the right without us having to do anything else so you just get the breakpoint or the width at which this particular menu appears and you just put this if you have multiple columns you can give them relative numbers so whichever number is higher will be pushed onto the right the lower number order will be pushed onto the left since we specified three for this and usually it would be zero or one for default values so this is three and that's why the hamburger is pushed onto the right since this is 70 percent you can also change this to 10 percent and 
even this one to 10% just to bring these two together and another 10% would be normal gap so that way you customize the mobile view of your menu and made it responsive I'll click on update let's see our header in action again even my preview is updated and just like that on mobile we get our neat little hamburger icon let's customize all the items from within the Elementor interface so I'll click on nav menu I'll go back to desktop I'll click on nav menu mobile drop down I'll say full width I'll align it onto the center and you can also change the styling of each elements so you can change text color so this is the text color I'll just keep it at the default you can change hover state horizontal padding vertical padding and remember if you add these values again the menu might get pushed onto the bottom and you need to choose a breakpoint so that, that the ugly uh, menu overflow doesn't occur since I've left all the settings default I didn't add any paddings or spaces the menu is fine in all three views and then within drop down you choose text color typography and all that stuff you can also change the toggle button which is the hamburger icon so you can change the color and background color background color I've completely made it transparent and you can change it the way you want so that's how you use Elementor's nav menu widget and also tweak it a bit make it appear right next to the search toggle using simple CSS all you need to do is to click on the section that has these columns specify your media query or a custom breakpoint in other words specify the max width at which the hamburger appears which is 846 pixels in my case if you've tweaked the custom breakpoint default values you'd want to add that value here and change the order of this column just give it a higher number and it will automatically push right next to the toggle and that's how it works it's quite simple so that's Elementor nav menu in a nutshell well that's not it you can build your own nav menu using a free plugin called unlimited elements I've already explained some of the videos on this now let's build nav menus using unlimited elements by taking code from CodePen and making it an Elementor menu also before leaving and creating our own widgets I just want to tweak this nav menu I forgot to show you that so mobile drop-down is the same as the hamburger icon and this is a normal menu on desktop and the mobile drop-down is the hamburger icon and all the settings affect the items within hamburger icon we chose 846 pixels and we want the drop-down menu so when we click on the hamburger icon we want the width to be full width so if you skip this you can see what happens it just inherits the width of the column which is not nice so you obviously want full width for the hamburger menu in mobile view and also you can choose to align elements aside or onto the center as you can see here you can also choose the hamburger icon so let's pick hamburger itself you can also align the toggle onto the left right within the column since we've had a column of 5% width it doesn't matter much if you have a bigger column for this hamburger it will be aligned onto the right you can also change the colors of the toggles so within drop down whatever color you add that will also be the colors of items when you click on the hamburger menu and toggle button you can choose all sorts of stuff and that's how we tweaked our elementor header made it responsive and also pushed this particular column onto the right when the mobile breakpoint is reached that's a pretty neat stuff don't worry i'll leave this code in the description i'll also leave a link to css breakpoints watch that it's really important i think elementor is going to add more breakpoints in future versions but till then you need to write breakpoints on your own click on the section go to advanced custom css add breakpoint condition it's the one highlighted in green within that you can put any css code so when the view reaches this width you can put any css code we just wanted to align this onto the right that's what we did okay now that we've built our own menu let's go ahead and actually build it right from the scratch using unlimited elements add-on so go to wordpress repository and install and activate unlimited elements add-on in the wordpress dashboard click on unlimited elements click on widgets for elementor also if you're new to unlimited elements i've made a video explaining the basics of unlimited elements you can also watch build your playlist in which we built a couple of widgets 
just by using unlimited elements in code from code pen or anywhere on the internet i'll click on widget for elementor i'll pick a category so this is the collection that i created i'll just click on add widget this is how you create widget it's available with the free version of unlimited elements but they have ton of widgets built for you if you have the pro version link to that will be in the description too so the first menu that we'll build is this one all we need is to take this code put it in our unlimited elements widget creator and then change it into a functional nav menu i've taken a page elementor canvas page i changed the layout to canvas i'll be showing all the menus here so that you'll clearly understand how all the different menus function since it's an element of widget you can drag it into your header or if you build a really cool menu you can let it be on its own similar to this one so this one i'll take the html let's call this menu my new menu one widget name will be autofill based on what you type here i'll click on add widget i'll double click this my new menu one i'll click on html i'll delete this dummy text i'll take html from here also you need basic understanding of html and css to use this but if you know how to use it it's really powerful we can comfortably re remove this section we don't need it since this is a widget it will automatically be within a section in elementor i've removed the section from the top and bottom so I'll, i've removed this line and the last line which is not necessary i'll click on css i'll take css from here since i've removed the section called stage i don't need its css i need css from here I'll copy this go to the widgets css i'll just put css i'll click on update and it's updated let's preview our widget you can hold down command and click on preview it'll open up the preview in the new page and just like that we made a nav menu but the links are not functional yet don't worry about that we'll change that so how do you put links in the nav menu i made a video on creating your own elementor buttons by taking any code, any button code from code pen and converting it into a functional element button. Go check that out. It's really helpful. It will help you understand how to create your own widgets. Also, that link will be in the description. I'll try to leave as many links as possible. Also, you check out the channel for creative element buttons. So here, we need to replace the static text with an elementor button, right? We need to make this home button a link whose attributes can be adjusted using front end. So a link has this structure. So you remove link and in place of that you add an actual HTML link structure and this is the attribute of the link or the title of the menu item and within the first tag you say ahref. I've explained this in the element of buttons tutorial and within href you can create an attribute link attribute for this and you can get that from the front end attributes are a way to get dynamic input from users so click on add attribute click on link let's call it menu one link default value should be hash i'll click on add attribute and between these double quotes i'll click and highlight the cursor and now i can click on menu one link so this link can be adjusted using front end I'll show you that in a bit. Similarly, you can do the rest for the rest of the items. So you can replace about with this particular link structure. So ahref and then leave blank space, create another attribute and call it link to. I'll also show that in a bit. Link has this regular HTML structure. So first you delete the text, put the link structure in your, in your text here and you say href. So every static text should be replaced with this particular pattern which is the pattern for html links right even your elementor buttons have this pattern so ahref double quotes and then this is the static text for your menu item you can also create an attribute for this i'll go to attributes again i'll create another attribute which is a menu menu to link i'll say menu to link again the default value let's give it hash i'll go to html and I'll highlight the double quotes with an href, click on link attribute, I'll update this. Now I'll refresh this page and once you create the widget in widget creator tutorial, you can click on update or create and those will be available within your Elementor interface. So this is the menu that we created. 
just like that we have all the links and you can see we've created a couple of attributes these are ba basically the links that should be opened when we click on this home mine or whatever galleries so i'll add i'll link this to my home page which is this one wpfreedom.com similarly you can do all the custom attributes stuff and like stuff like that i'll update it i'll click on preview changes now this is my nav menu when i click on home i'm taken to the link attribute which is my home page so that's how it functions similarly you can add attributes to other items and this is a cool nav menu and if you want this widget to have padding it's still an element of widget click on the widget itself go to advanced add a margin of maybe 50 pixels now you see the blue border expand you can adjust this per device you can also add padding to the device let's add 30 pixels padding you can see that in action you can also change the background that has this menu background of the section that has this menu so let's go with a darker background so something like that so we just created our custom menu the first nav menu just by using the code from CodePen. You can just Google them. There are a lot of them. Or you can go to freefrontend.com. There are a ton of CSS menus. All these can be made as Elementor menus. And some of them involve CSS. Some of them have JavaScript. So the second menu that I want to show you is this one. So when you click on it, this is the animation that it shows. Let's go ahead and build this menu. It also has JavaScript. You can also tweak JavaScript if you know basic knowledge of JavaScript. Anyway, we've built our first widget. We're happy with it. We'll go back to our widgets list. Let's duplicate this so that we can add another section or another widget right next to here. I'll go here. Again, I'll click on add widget. I'll call it menu to style or whatever you want. Just give it a unique name. Click on add widget. And once it's added, you can either click on this pencil icon or double click this to open up the widget for editing. Go to HTML, remove the dummy HTML, go to the code pen that you want. So this is the code pen that we're trying to, I'll just copy HTML from here. I'll paste the HTML. Don't worry about the horrible code and stuff like that. I'll explain what it is. It's nothing but a section. These are a lot of menus. We just want a single menu. So we'll remove all these. As you can see, nav is just like a section and within the section they have different menus you can see that here so they have different menus in this demo we just want one menu so we can just copy one nav from here and we need to carefully understand what is the css associated with that particular nav and paste all that css into this widget css i call this html css mapping so if you understand the html structure and if you know which css code to copy in this well, you can particularly or virtually build any widget that you want from the code using internet or code pen or whatever source you want, right? So this is the second thing and it has a class of underline. So we need to pick CSS that has underline. We also need to pick CSS that contains links. Again, if you have a link, it's better to add a class name to general HTML element and replace the link name with the class name. I've also shown this in number of unlimited elements videos. Watch build your elements or build your website's playlist. I've explained how to do that on a lot of videos. So we just need to copy every CSS code that has underline and that is associated with links. So starting with nav, underline, underline nth child till here. This is the code that's associated with the first particular set of the nav menu. So I'll just copy this. I'll click on update. It's updated. Again, let's preview our widget. Let's see if what we've done is correct. Don't worry. If it doesn't work, there's nothing to lose. We've missed some of the CSS here. So let's go ahead and find out what it is. Oh, we've missed the JavaScript from here. So let's copy the whole JavaScript. It's pure JavaScript. It's not any library. Again, if it's not pure CSS, click on this and click on view compiled CSS. The same with HTML. I've already done that. So it's showing me the compiled html css and javascript that i can directly copy into my widget creator so javascript i'll take it i'll go to javascript here paste it update now let's preview our widget i've dragged this widget into the page that i created earlier i removed that widget and put this nav menu widget as you can see here it doesn't have any attributes because we didn't create any it still doesn't seem to work 
it looks like a regular menu even after copying javascript so we need to carefully see what we've missed so we've copied everything from here till here why didn't we copy this it's because it belongs to another header or another nav menu as you can see here so the first nav menu is what we're trying to achieve and we don't need this code we've also copied javascript turns out i just missed this part of code which defines attributes such as underline height and transition duration that were used so i'll copy this code i'll do one thing i've updated this page i'll click on preview changes so every time we update our menu we can simply refresh the preview page to see the hover effects in action now i'll paste the remaining code so the root and all the nav that is required to function we also have javascript it has a neat little function and how does it trigger so on click so when you click on a link it's performing this function which is basically responsible for that underline i'll update this i'll update this page so even the preview will be updated now now we get the link and when we click on it we get that neat little underlining animation now this menu is within a section that has a dark background you can remove that you can make the transparent or put this in your header the way you want it so just like that we have our menu here but there's a problem with this when you add a link attribute to this when you click on it it'll automatically be taken to that page and you won't be able to see that animation so how do you change that so in javascript if you look closely it says on click but there's another event that can be triggered which is on mouse over so when you hover over this particular item that particular function can be triggered i'll do that for just one link and you can see what it does so i'll say on mouse over and it's calling a function ul which is essentially the javascript function so on mouse over when you hover over the home page it will perform the animation now i'll refresh this one and also this one i'll click on this now when i hover over the home page you can see that the underline is under this home we didn't change the remaining attributes for this so when you change all on clicks to on mouse over you'll have a hover based animated menu we'll also add links don't worry so we'll change on click to on mouse over you can take this in a uh, atom text editor or something and then do the same update it update this page and also its preview now when i hover over the menu item the underlining animation is performed that's cool we need proper link attributes this is already a link you can change the text within so change videos to anything else that you want so static text we also want to add an attribute here so we'll say href again double quotes update it go to attribute i'll say link one so attribute type is basically a link i'll say link one default value again hash add attribute go to html and within href i'll click on the cursor click on link one update you can do the same you can add attribute of href to every link let's create another attribute for the second link click on add attribute it's link i'll call it link 2 default value be hash click on add attribute go to html again with an href i'll click and highlight the cursor and i'll click on link 2 you can also change the text or create an attribute for text as well but you'll just build your menu once you won't be updating on a regular basis so i'm happy with what i have i'll refresh this page and also its preview now when you hover over these two items or all the items the animation is performed and they also have attributes right next to them so i'll click on this and you can see link one and link two so i'll say apple.com we'll see if our links working so when i click on home you should open apple.com which it does oh i forgot to add https now it'll work don't worry about that i'll just reload the preview of the page again i'll click on home now it takes me to apple.com if you make the preview link based or click based you won't be see, able to see this animation because the moment you click the element it's taken to that particular page so let's change or keep the animation to hover based create attributes for the rest of the items and that's how it works we've also made the second menu now the last menu similarly you can achieve other menus by copying their respective classes so if you want the second menu you want everything with 
black underline and link based css so uh, this black underline i think this is the only thing that you need this one this one snippet the whole underline and nav snippet so till here is the code that you need to copy in css for the second one and also don't forget the root because it won't perform that action so this is our second nav menu i'll wrap it up with the third one which is this so when you click on it it'll open up a hamburger icon and it will show all the menus or items and their color base let's go ahead and create this so i'll create another widget i'll go back i'll call it style 3 widget i'll just wrap it up quickly click on add widget we'll be adding the widget to the same page i'll delete i'll reload the page once the widget is created so style 3 namen i'll double click this so it's this one so we need the whole thing whole css code here except body and other elements that change normally so we'll take code from svg also replace general elements with classes and replace the elements in css with dot class name i've shown that in unlimited elements creative buttons tutorial so till the end we need to copy all the css copy all the css from svg till the end i'll go to widget css i'll paste that first i'll update it i'll go to html i'll copy the whole html copy it again you need to click on this and show view compiled css again i'll remove the dummy html i'll put the html i'll update it and there's no javascript to add here and for body they've given a linear gradient so we'll paste this gradient into our section that has this i'll go to section custom css i'll say selector i'll paste the code i'll also give a min height to our section so that we can see the nav menu in action i'll just say height min height let's change it to 600 pixels i'll update this now let's preview our third nav menu widget if it's functioning properly or let's actually refresh this page and drag it into this particular page so that we can see it in action roll down this one so here's my nav and those are my menu items and they seem to work perfectly fine all we need to do is again change the items i'll go to widgets list so we need to add attributes for items again again home they have they already have a href just replace these with link attributes for each item change the text to the text that you want that's it it's that simple create a link attribute replace this hash zero with the link one attribute link two attribute link three link four and so on and replace this with the text that you want i'll just do it for this one i'll say my menu and i'll create a link attribute for it choose link from here you need to do for all the items in the menu link item attribute i'll call it i'll give it a default value of hash go to html again so i'll replace this with link item at update it i'll also update this page and refresh it again because the widget itself needs to be updated now my menu is a link and we can give an attribute for that link or let's link it to our home page or a sample page or whatever page you want i'll click on preview and when i click on my menu i'm taken to my home page just like that and this is the menu in action you can tweak css properties to change the space between the toggle and other item you can also change the text and create attributes for link attributes for each of them and just like that we built three widgets or three nav menu widget using unlimited elements go to freefrontend.com they have ton of nav menu items i'll probably make another video showing you how to create your own nav menus because these are just endless and i think elementor's nav menu widget is a bit limited in its functionality so you can get nav menus such as this one you can see there are a lot of nav menus try porting them some of them are easy some of them are hard you need to follow them and you can have nav menus such as this one all perspective based and stuff like that and even this nav menu you can build it just watch out properly for css for html and any javascript that you need to add or modify based on that particular page css classes need to be unique html you need to adjust a little bit of html if it's required and so on so that's it for now that's how you tweak elementor's nav menu widget or build your own nav menus using unlimited elements add on i'll make a video on unlimited elements custom header using custom nav menu will build more complex nav menus there is even a nav menu attribute in the pro version of unlimited elements i'll show that i'll i'll show you how powerful that is links to everything that i talk about in this video will be in the description 
that's it for now hope you guys enjoyed it i'll talk to you in the next one till then keep watching elemental basics playlist there are a lot of playlists on the channel